You're listening to the B2B Growth Think Tank, the show that brings you the virtual hot seat where each week my expert guests and I help another business leader by masterminding actionable solutions to a specific challenge they're currently trying to solve in their business. So if you're looking for answers to a specific challenge that you're facing, that if you could solve in the next 90 days would have a huge impact on your growth, send it in to thinktank at thinklikeafish.co.uk and we'll see if we can feature you on the show. My name is Adam King, your host and the captain of the ship of growth consultancy Think Like a Fish. And if you're ready to rethink what's possible for your business and discover the growth strategies, advice and insight to turn this new vision into a reality, let's get started. Hey, Adam here. Now, before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to quickly let you know about my Growth Accelerator implementation program. Now, this is ideal for owners or directors of established B2B or professional service firms who want to generate more revenue in less time while lowering marketing costs. And it's especially ideal for those who are sick and tired of the hype and false promises who instead like the idea of working with a partner that puts skin in the game with you and guarantees results. Now, if that is you, then the Growth Accelerator implementation program could be the perfect solution to setting you on the path to sustainable growth. Because when you partner with me for 90 days, I'll help you implement a simple and scalable business development system that is guaranteed to generate at least 500,000 of new revenue for your business in the next 12 months. And if you like the sound of this, make sure you visit thinklikeafish.co.uk forward slash accelerator and watch the short video that explains how it all works. But before you go and do that, let's get to today's episode. Welcome to the B2B Growth Think Tank. This is the virtual hot seat section of the episode that I did with Matthew Kimberley from Book Yourself Solid Worldwide, where we are answering a listener question all about how to add a new revenue stream to their business and ideas for how to price that service. So make sure you listen to the full episode with Matthew Kimberley as well. But until you do, let's dive into today's virtual hot seat. What we will do is we will sort of mastermind, brainstorm some potential solutions. We won't know the whole context, some of it, so we may have to make some assumptions, but the aim is that we can actually help this person out and maybe somebody else out there that is going through something similar. It's a real world business challenge that's happening right now. So Let's do it. today's challenge is one of my goals this year is to add a new revenue stream to my business. What is the best way to structure a new service offer and how can I work out the best way to price it? Should I go high ticket like I see so many out there suggesting? I don't necessarily feel comfortable with this since so many are struggling or just scraping by right now and I don't want to appear unsympathetic. Cat, this person is a funeral director. <laughs> so my dad is a priest in the Church of England. Uh, not anymore. My dad was a priest in the Church of England. And... Uh, he, when he retired, uh, which is now, he became a freelance funeral celebrant. Because mm. um, most people don't have uh, a priest when they, you know, most people don't go to church. Uh, and so they don't have a local parish priest. And so when, when a relative passes away, the funeral director will always ask, who is your priest? They'll say, we don't have one. So there's a pool of freelancers available. And uh, dad, you know, never went to marketing school, went to theological college. And every time we went on holiday for you know, 10, 15 years, he would always send a postcard to the funeral directors. And that is book yourself solid networking and referral strategies all wrapped up in one. That is keeping your existing valuable relationships very close. So that's the brief funeral uh, director story aside. <laughs> what do you think about this? Uh, what do you think about this story? Adam, what's your, what's, your, what's your take on this? Want to add a new revenue stream to my business? What do I do? So this to me is saying that this is, this is a person who has probably got, and we've got to make some assumptions, but this is, they've probably got more of a traditional offline, uh, offline service business and it's been hit by the situation. So maybe they've done some research into creating programs or online stuff and all the rest of it. And maybe they've watched a few people talking about high ticket programs and they're just looking at ways to maybe be able to deliver a service in maybe a bit more of a leveraged way, or maybe they are looking at a way to diversify the revenue because their core revenue stream has been hit by, by the situation of the pandemic. Maybe there's a bit of a psychology piece here that's going through it in that the, the question of, I don't want to appear unsympathetic and raise prices also tells me that there is probably a client or an existing client base that has been hit 
So maybe it's more of a question of going back to the foundations before you even consider what the service is, how you price it, go back to your foundation and ask that question, who is this for? Is it for my existing client base? Is it for, um, you know, what, what result do they want? What is the problem they have and how am I going to solve it before you even consider the pricing options behind, you know, or the structure of a new service, anything like that. And often it will come down to that. Yep. That's, that's where I would start. Would you have anything to add around that in terms of? You know, it's, such, of- it's such a broad question, Adam, and, and not, you know, it's not there's little context. There's no context. We don't know whether this person runs a travel agency or, or whether they are a, a personal trainer or whether they do accountancy or whether they run a, an affiliate marketing program. Or we, we, we've just absolutely no context, but it does allow us to talk in broader brushstrokes about what, when, and how should you add additional revenue streams to your business? And as you said, Adam, 100% correctly, it always, always, always begins with the person to whom you're selling. Who is your target market? And then what can we, what do they want? What do they need? And how can we provide them with what they want and they need? And how can we charge accordingly in such a way that it represents great value for them? Because any sales transaction represents a uh, valuable uh, transfer of property in both directions. The salesperson values your cash more than they value the resources required to deliver the service. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't be charging what they do. Uh, and the person who is happily handing over the money to receive the service values the service more than they value the cash. So we should, you know, any transaction that takes place that is not forced, that is not based upon monopoly uh, or undue, un, unforeseen circumstances like insurance payments or, or emergency bills or something like that is always based upon both people being happy or the transaction just wouldn't take place. So there's two concepts I want to discuss. The first one is the thousand dollar burger. The thousand dollar burger is, um, well, what, let me ask you a question, what, uh, which I will always also answer because it's a rhetorical question. What kind of restaurant sells a $1,000 burger? The answer is the restaurant that sells a $1,000 burger is the restaurant that has a $1,000 burger on the menu. If you don't have a thousand dollar burger on the menu, nobody's ever going to knock on the door and say, "Hey, I, I like the, like the look of your two hundred dollar lobster. Could I please have a one thousand dollar burger?" But if you put it in the menu, there is a chance that you will sell it. Now, you don't necessarily want to sell it, right? Because if you're always selling one thousand dollar burgers, you haven't tested the top of the market. You don't know what your market want to spend their money on if they're regularly buying thousand dollar burgers maybe you need a $2,000 hot dog, right? So if you've got something that tests the very top of the market, that's my approach to high ticket items. You know, don't bring your assumptions to the table. What's high ticket for you might not be high ticket for somebody else. You know, have you ever paid $120 for a shave? I have, you know, um, because there's a place that sold $120 shave. It would take me about three weeks to grow it back after that. So it would be money well spent. (laughs) <laughs> right? I'm the kind of person who likes to sit in the front of an airplane, right? For one person, that's utter madness. And for another person, it's um, kind of fundamentally, yeah, of course, I'm going to sit in the front of the airplane. So don't bring your assumptions or presumptions if you don't have experience, right? I see lots of people say, I don't know if I can do high ticket. Well, they've never actually sold high ticket. For them, high ticket is, uh, you know, a $5,000 consultation. Whereas for, for the next person in the line, High ticket is $750,000 consultation. So don't, you know, don't, don't bring your concept. If you truly, truly, truly know the market, you will price accordingly. If you don't truly know the market, you won't. Do you That's think, um, sort of uh, building on that, do you think that there's a, a, and maybe this is where this question has come from, there's a bit of a prevalence and maybe that's why I say that I think that this person's probably been searching around for a few ideas and all the rest of it. They probably, you know, downloaded a few uh, freebies and gone on a couple of webinars and all the rest of it. And and they're a bit like some people are telling you, you have to go down this high ticket route you, or maybe they're thinking, well, you have to go down the right. If you're going to build an online sales funnel and then create a product at the end of it and all the rest of it, you have to start low ticket and tripwire and all that kind of thing, which is, you know, (laughs) baffling that you would consider that without actually testing an offer anyway. But a lot of people are hung up on that high ticket and the cost and the price but they're not actually then going back and asking themselves, what is the value in solving the problem that you're offering to solve for somebody out there? Yeah, because they don't have confidence in it. And, and that, I mean, your, your assumption is my assumption as well, that this person is operating in the online marketing space where the concept of high ticket has been sold as a, a, 
uh, quite rightly, within the very small, very incestuous, uh, slightly distasteful online marketing space as being a, a godsend and a be-all yeah. and end-all. It's like a panacea that just will no, answer all your prayers. When has High Ticket been there? I tell you when, High Ticket is a... Is a uh, high Ticket, let me rephrase that. If you're going shopping, no, if you're going fishing, let's come back to our fishing analogy from the very beginning. If you've got the resources available to you, then cheap and cheerful is a fantastic business model. It always has been. We are the cheapest service provider. Nobody beats us on prices. That is a brilliant way to grow a business. Um, as long as you can maintain the margins and as long as you have the resources available. What resources do you need? Inventory, insurance, relationships with suppliers, uh, ability to get people through the door of your supermarket, right? This person, probably not in that situation based upon the language that they use. Probably one person, intellectual property, good idea. What, what is my good idea? What do I do with it, right? So in that instance, forgetting the term high ticket, Looking to support dozens or hundreds of budget buyers is a bad idea because you, and this is why I always cringe when I see people who are new to the consulting, coaching, or training space say, I'm going to start a 47,000, uh, sorry, $47 a month mastermind program or a $27 a month mastermind program because my friend or my teacher or I did a course by somebody who's got 400,000 people on their mailing list and 40,000 people in their $47 a month program. I'm like, yeah. And they've only been working for two decades to, to build up to that point. What resources do you have available to you? R is supporting 100. Can you even find 100 people who will give you their email address, let alone $47? I'm not suggesting you don't. I'm just saying, if you're just getting started, also, I don't think this person is just getting started because of the language they use, because they said an additional revenue stream. But if you are just getting started, you are looking for the fastest route to the money because the money is the resource that will support everything. You're, you're looking to sign up 20 clients by any means necessary to fund your uh, market research, to fund your growth, and to put that all-important big fish on the family table. So you should be looking for big fish when you're just getting started. No question. Does that mean more, forgetting the high ticket questions, that are you looking for budget buyers? Are you looking for non-budget buyers? I say you're looking for non-budget buyers, high margins, um, perpetually people will stick around for a while. And one of the no. things that could it be before I sort of like let you sort of continue, one of the, I'll be honest, one of the, um, one of the reasons I selected this specifically for you was because I actually saw something in this that it's, it's something that not, again, not a lot of people are going to consider as an option, but this person is asking about additional revenue stream, which makes me think that they're trying to come up with an idea or, or something brand new. Well, why not consider the kind of model? And I'm not sort of saying you go and talk to Matthew necessarily because I don't know your industry, but there is an option there. If you're looking for an additional revenue stream, why don't you look for that proven model out there that's already existing and you license the IP to do that? If appropriate, that's very good. Often when I hear additional revenue stream though, Adam, it's because people have given up. I've got a course and 100 people have taken it. Now I need an additional revenue stream. Well, if 100 people have taken it, I'm guessing there's another 1,000 people that would take it if you took it to them. Why are we stopping now? Why are we giving up? There's two ways, basically, to grow a business, only two. One is you take your existing product or service to a new group of people, whether directly by opening a new outlet or opening up a new target market or indirectly through licensing, franchising, stuff like that. The other option is to add additional services and products to your existing target market. Starbucks started with coffee, uh, dry coffee, ended up adding water, and then you could have liquid coffee, ended up adding bananas, newspapers, smoothies, all that crap. But they had an existing market. So whatever you're, whatever you're thinking about taking out, it comes back to what Adam said at the very beginning. Whatever you're thinking of adding on, mm. it comes back to what Adam said at the very beginning. Look at the people who you serve and ask, do they need a newspaper with their coffee? Do they want fries with that? And if you're ready to, um, if, you, if you've got your existing revenue source and it's still extant despite COVID and it's still going along, go and find another 50, 100, 300,000 people who are interested in that product. Or conversely, go back and talk to those people and find out what other problems that they're dealing with and see if you can solve them. Come up with that product, that service that could actually solve the next phase or... 
Another way is, is, is if you can't and it's not your, your, your wheelhouse, partner with someone that can and come absolutely. to some sort of other arrangement. People's, other, uh, the power in, in, in relationships is absolutely everything for me. You know, one of our members of the Book Yourself Style Advisory Board, one of our certified coaches, Amy Landino. Amy Landino has close to 500,000 um, uh, YouTube subscribers today. And we were having a conversation on advisory board and somebody said, well, I'd like that. How'd you get that? And she said, oh, you know, it was only showing up four times a week for 10 years to get my first 100,000 people. Um, and, you know, I, I no disrespect or, or assumption to the person who submitted this question, but are you showing up enough for your existing source of revenue? 100%. Because yeah, there's, there's, that's often with, you know, if you can then go and find someone like that, if you had some, I don't know, form of a offer to make to someone like that with 500,000 followers, this is a bad example, maybe, but if you could then go and say, well, I don't need an additional revenue stream. Maybe I can just use my offer and offer it to somebody else's audience. There you go. There's your stream or that's, that's bringing in new clients in a different way. Like so many different ways. Find another, find another group of people who will buy yeah. your existing thing. Yeah, get invited to fish in in a in a pond of a private pond full of hungry fish where there's no other fishermen fishing whatsoever. So, on that fishing uh, analogy, Matthew, thank you. That was um that was good fun. So that's it for this episode. I hope you found it valuable. I hope you got some great ideas that you can take away and apply to your business to help you grow. If you did please share it with somebody else that might also find this valuable because they will thank you for it. Also to let you know that I have a podcast gift page where I put a lot of resources that I love to share with my listeners. You can find the links to join the Facebook community there and you can get my book, the Conversational Relationship Marketing and the audiobook version all for free, plus a number of other resources I'll be adding over time on that page. So make sure you head there to thinklikeafish.co.uk forward slash podcast gift and you can help yourself to the things that make most sense to you and if you have enjoyed the show please make sure you're subscribed you'll get updated as the new episodes come out and finally last favor please consider giving the show your honest rating and review on apple podcasts i read every single one they mean the world for me i love hearing from my listeners and it does help others find the show as well so if you want to go and do that i'd really appreciate it but until next time have an awesome day and we'll speak soon